Good afternoon again. It's Caveman Murph here. This is uh, part two in a video series about the R Grill Rotisserie Spit XXL. Um, I want to start off by um, letting you know that there was one uh, piece that I forgot to showcase, um, and that was the drive element. Um, so you'll see a small round hole where it's going to go onto the motor, and then an open end, and then a stainless steel bolt that will actually connect to the stainless steel um, rod and drive it. Uh, this piece is made out of uh, cold rolled mild steel. Um, this metal insert is uh, solid, again, um, mild steel. It appears that um, it has been um, probably heat welded um, and kind of like a spot weld, but basically it's all the way around. So it, it, it joins the, the cold rolled steel to the uh, solid insert here. Um, you can see where uh, the machine heated up the metal and then it distorts it. So they've taken a, a device to, to kind of shave it down and make it smooth again before it's painted. Um, but this does, um, show you that it, it is well connected in there and uh, shouldn't should never like slip or or you know uh, come apart here so that it, it stops spinning I uh, wanted to show that um, to make sure everyone understands the other thing I wanted to let everyone know is that the spit when it joined together is like 73 inches I believe is the total each piece is um, a little less than 36 inches um, this device is rated for about a 125 pound piece of meat. Um, when, uh, when my family gets together in a couple days, um, we'll be, we'll be cooking about a 70 to 80 pound pig. Um, and because this is a uh, really heavy duty cold rolled stainless steel, um, it should have no problem. Uh, there's going to be absolutely no bending, no sagging. Um, the gauge of this stainless steel um, can withstand a, a whole heck of a lot of force. Um, so I, I agree with the manufacturer that this definitely um, should be able to support 120 pound, 120 pound, or 125 pound uh, roast with, without a problem. Um, we'll, we'll talk about more about this in video three when we talk about uh, placement and how to actually put the meat on and, and how this thing performs. But um, Obviously, uh, the closer you put these bearings together and the closer you get it to each part of the, the meat, uh, this will allow the, the, the weight to be distrib distributed better. You, you don't want to put uh, the first bearing on the drive edge right at the very edge, and you don't want to put the, the, the other end right on the edge either. You wanna, you wanna uh, once your meat is on, you wanna make sure that, that this is, um, as, as close to the meat as possible so that we uh, have the maximum uh, weight support possible. All right, well, so we're gonna get started with assembly. Um, the first thing we need to do obviously is make the legs. So in order to do this build, uh, we're gonna need four tools. That's another beautiful thing about this kit is that you don't need uh, a whole toolbox to, to take care of it. And again, with uh, some minor um, mechanical aptitude, uh, anybody, uh, uh, including my children, should be able to assemble this with ease. Um, again, four tools needed. Um, this is a, a German-made uh, device, so it's not surprising that everything included except for the electrical devices are indeed European, uh, thus the, um, all the bolts are metric. So you're going to need a 13 uh, millimeter uh, wrench. Uh, we're going to need our classic 10 millimeter uh, wrench. Um, we're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, which I'll get to later on why. And then lastly, we're going to need some metric um, Allen wrenches. Um, and, and again, I'll, I'll show you why later. Um, so quickly, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and start the legs. So the legs, uh, you take one of these pieces here, um, and we're going to take the each one of these leg uh, slots has a, a, a tightening screw on it. Um, they, they call them jam nuts. Um, 
So this is a, a, what we call an interference fit uh, assembly. So we unscrew each of these. Um, you're gonna slide the leg in. Um, my opinion is, is that you're gonna wanna slide this all the way in as far as it'll go for each thing um, so that you get maximum strength uh, when it's being supported on the ground. Um, quickly we'll unscrew that one, put the next leg in here. Um, and then lastly, we'll unscrew this third one. That one's a little tight. Look at our 10 millimeter here. And we'll slide that leg all the way in. Then we want to take our 10 millimeter and uh, we'll give each of these just a snug tight. You don't have to jam down on it because um, th this is plenty of support um, despite the weight we're putting on it. Um, and you don't want to do a lot of damage to these, these leg pieces. Uh, put that to the side for now. Um, do the other one real quick. Right, we'll put these last legs in. Found a little bit of slag in here, so this is um this is part of the way this since this is uh, manufactured by hand. Um, you know, there are a little bit of um, minor flaws here and there. Took my screwdriver and just uh, poked that slag away and had no problems um, fitting in from there. Oh, another little bit of slag in there. Can't tell if that's paint or slag, to be honest. And yes, this is the very first time that I've assembled this. So you're encountering uh, this assembly with me. Um, which is kind of the purpose of the video too because if I find a problem uh, with the assembly we're all going to learn about it um, at the same time. Again, give each of these um, just a, a snugness. Um, so as I told you, uh, this, this powder coat that, that they use to cover this mild steel is uh, a really good powder coat. However, powder coat is not meant to be, you know, uh, touched by other metal. It's, it's really a protectant. So I've already um, put marks on these bolts uh, because I had to use the wrench. Um, again, not a showstopper, just be aware that, you know, this is a working uh, piece of equipment and um, the powder coat's gonna keep it well protected, but everywhere you need to use a wrench, um, it may indeed um, put some marks. We'll put that down to the side. All right, so the next thing we want to do um, is prepare the motor. Um, so if you look at the motor carefully, you'll find that it has uh, four screws here. Um, basically, those four screws are holding uh, the, the 110 volt motor inside. But we also need to figure out how to attach this to the two posts. So what the manufacturer has done is uh, they've shipped the two top screws are slightly longer and they're actually stopped in there. You can't screw them anymore and there's a gap you can put your fingernail under. Well, that's there on, by design because um, this piece here that I showed you in video one is the piece that attaches to the motor and it has this ring on it, which then slides down the, the the height posts and and the the you know the, the stands um, we have to attach this to the motor so we can slide the motor on, on the post 
So uh, you'll need your Phillips, your Phillips head screwdriver. And what we're going to do is we're going to unscrew these. Um, the finger tight to begin with, which is good. Um, so we want to do that. Um, they've kind of made it dummy proof. This only goes on one way. You can't put it on backwards or anything. It only goes on one way. So that, that's good news. So we're going to put that in there. We're going to put these screws on here. Um, the manufacturer's done a really good job in selecting the length of these screws. Um, they end up holding this tight, but it gets maximum penetration into the gearbox behind it. Um, that's good. Uh, if you have too long of a screw, it's going to hit the other. It's going to hit the the back in there, and then you won't have a tightness. If if you're if the screw's too short, um, that that's also a problem because we're not going to have maximum engagement uh, to this weight. This is probably a, a three four pound motor, um, so we want as much um, bolt engagement as we. Uh, as we can to maximize the strength of, of this hold of these two screws. Um, okay, so now that we've attached that, this is ready to go slide on. I'll slide it on in a few minutes to let everybody know. Uh, okay, so the bearing ride, uh, the bearing carriers for the spit itself, um, these are already ready to go uh, right on the spit. We want to back out these. Uh, these finger uh, jam screws uh, so that they're they're open you have a free path for the for the posts so uh, I'll prep these they're they're shipped all the way tight so that you don't lose them obviously but we're gonna back those off um, so that it's ready to go um, on so we've prepped that um, your manual drive rod we're not gonna need that but uh, what I wanted to do, uh, we're not going to need that for this assembly, but I did want to show you um, how it works because if you ever do need to go into manual mode, uh, they did provide a method for that. So let's talk about how that works. So this is a piece of all thread with, um, with the smooth center. So this was cut, obviously had all thread out to here. So they, they cut it so that there's exactly one bolt uh, worth of thread left on each side, which is pretty ingenious if you ask me. Um, so if you ever need to go into manual mode, you're going to unscrew one side, uh, finger tight. Um, you're going to take the drive end. You'll notice that this is the drive end of the, of the spit. So this end has the um, has the, the center connector on it. And then this, this side has the, the single hole for uh, the drive uh, bolt. What we're gonna do is we're gonna slide that through the, where the drive bolt goes. And uh, once you put that nut back on, now we have uh, a manual turn. See, you can turn it just like this. Uh, so I wanted to demonstrate that before we go into the full assembly here. Uh, but again, we're not going to need that anymore today, so I'm going to put that aside. <clears throat> All right. Um, from here, uh, oh yeah, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and get the, the drive motor for prep. So as I told you, we have this drive, um, this drive cog or this uh, drive element. Um, we we need to assemble that to the actual motor because it, it comes shipped loose. Um, <clears throat> so you have this, um, you have this silver uh, drive shaft here. Um, it is a keyed drive shaft. Um, so that's good because we're gonna use that key to provide our, um, to provide our connection to this drive cog. Um, I believe it's a, Four millimeter, but we'll we'll check. Uh, I believe this is a four millimeter uh, Allen. Okay, so uh, where it connects to the motor, that's a four millimeter Allen. Okay, and again, it's it's jam nut style, so it's going to jam up against this key here um, on the drive shaft. So I'm going to back these off so uh, there's no interference as we slide it on. Get that back out. These are nice. Um, 
nice black iron Allen uh, bolts, so that's good. So again, we're gonna we're gonna put that on uh, right that. I'd leave a I'd leave an eighth inch or, or so in between the wall and, and and the drive cog. We don't we don't want that rubbing or anything. And uh, there's a, that sticks in there a good inch, so it's not we're not uh, we're not pressed for real estate here. Um, we just want to make sure that it, it has a good connection and that we have uh, a good mate. And uh, like I said, it goes in there almost an inch, so that's plenty of mating surface. Um, and then, like I said, we're going to jam this uh, going to jam this onto the drive shaft key. Um, and because it is key, uh, it, it, if you put it on there just slightly off or whatever, um, it's going to tell you it'll auto adjust. So that's great. Um, it already adjusted. This is, uh, this is, you can't turn it by hand. That's just the style of motor and the magnets in there. Um, which, which again is another sign of quality, um, that this is not a free turning motor because it, it's so strong in terms of its ability to uh, turn that heavy piece of meat. Okay, so we'll finish tightening up this Allen bolt here. Again, you don't need to put a thousand pounds of force on this, just make them snug. Um, it is keyed. Um, unless we're spending this a thousand miles an hour, it's not going to slip off of there. Um, and these are pretty tight Allens, so they're not going to spin out. Um, it's it's pretty strong connection. So again, we're going to take this uh, stainless steel bolt out right here. This is the connection uh, drive bolt here, and uh, we'll put that aside and save that for later. Uh, make sure that you know which bolt this is, uh, because this is stainless steel. We want to keep all the stainless steel pieces. Uh, near the meat, one for health and two uh, for the rust factor. Uh, we don't want any iron uh, near where the meats are because it's all them chemicals and the heat and all the things that uh, occur when you cook that causes the metal to rust. And since this is stainless steel, this is never going to rust and you, you don't want your spit stuck to your motor. So uh, again, keep track of this bolt. All right, so the motor's all prepped now. Uh, the last thing we're going to do before we do final assembly is we're going to put these, the, we're gonna actually going to put this fit together. So again, uh, the same exact uh, bolt uh, is at the, the center joint. Um, let's see if it's different size or not. Um, I don't remember. It might be a quarter inch. No, it's actually the same exact size, so that's good. Um, you don't have to worry about figuring out which is which or... or you know, mismatching them when you disassemble and do your cleaning uh, because they are the same size. So that's good news. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna put this fit together just like this. Um, so now let's talk about this. So this is a really tight fit. Again, this is good. That means they've they've done a really good job with tolerancing. Um, there is no play. I mean, I had to use some force to put this together. Um, not so much force that it won't go on. But it's not so loose that when, as this is spinning, it, it flip-flops. So they've done a, an amazing job sourcing uh, this center uh, connector, uh, the, inner, the inner tube that connects this, so that the uh, ID is precise to the, o, the OD, rather, of the insert is precise within a couple of thousands to um, the, the ID of the actual spit itself. So again, there's no, no play in this. And that is actually a, another sign of, of excellent manufacturing, specifically since again, I, I said this was manufactured uh, by hand, probably in a small shop. Um, so uh, this bit, oh my goodness, it is, it is good stuff. So again, we're gonna take, so these larger bolts for both the drive motor and the, the center connection on the spit, um, it is the 13 millimeter, so you need a 13 millimeter for this. Um, I would actually use two wrenches for, for this demonstration. I, I won't. I'm just going to make it snug. This is one connection that I would make sure that I had a wrench on the bottom and a wrench on top, and that you give it a good quarter turn past snug. 
I had said on all the other connections that, that we've done so far that you just need it snug. This is probably one that I, you don't want to bend the metal. So you don't want to put too much force. But you want to, you definitely want to put, uh, you want to make sure it's tight. So I would say quarter turn past snug just to ensure that this doesn't fall off in the middle of a cook. The good news is, is that again, uh, let's pretend this fell out, which it won't with a quarter turn. But if it did, this interference fit is, is so tight, um, it, it, would be, it would definitely be a chore for this to come apart mid-cook, uh, just because uh, it, it's so tight. Um, but they put this bolt to make sure it doesn't come apart. And uh, uh, so that this, this uh, package means so they can ship it and so that you can store it, they've made it compact. So, this center joint is a necessity. It's kind of one of what we would call it a necessary evil. Um, would it be better if this spit was one whole piece? Absolutely. Um, but out of all the spits that I've, I've reviewed, I, I've never seen one that's not in two pieces in this length. Um, all right, so our spit's ready to go. We're actually ready for uh, our final setup. Um, so everything's been assembled, everything's been pre-assembled. Um, there's only one thing left, and that is to actually make, um, that's to actually put the, the two um, pieces together. Now, so that I can demonstrate this, uh, I'm actually going to make a short spit, but know that, that obviously you're going to spread this out um, longer, um, depending on your meat and your cook. But for today, we'll just show how this all goes together. Um, so that you know how to assemble it. So um, pretend this was the length of the spit and not um, and and not um, and not a foot apart like like I have it today. Um, put my tools away here so that where nothing's in the way. Um, put the spit down so that it's out of the way as well. All right, so um, if I remember right, um, we are going, yeah, so what you need to do is you need to put the bearing on, on first on both sides. Um, personally, I'm going to put the bearings to the inside, pointing toward the inside of your spit. So again, I've, I've loosened up the, the jam nuts. Uh, so that we can slide it down. Um, we'll go down about midway so everyone can see what's going on here. Okay, so I've tightened the jam nut here. Uh, we're going to take your, your drive motor side, same thing. I would point the bearings to the inside, okay, and slide that down uh, again. So this is a, a by eye height. There is no holes or measurements, which is probably another thing that would have been nice. If, if it had like holes every one inch and you can get precise um, precise measurements. But again, it, as long as your spit's not at some 45 degree angle or something, a degree or two off um, on each side is, is not gonna hurt your cook. So you wanna make sure that, um, you wanna make sure that these bearing, uh, these bearings and, and the, uh, the saddle for, for your spit, you want to make sure there are a 90 degrees, right? You don't want them off, you know, you don't want them off. You want it 90 degrees to the spit. Okay, so do your best. Again, you can, you can do a final adjustment once everything's set up. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we need to put the motor on. So in this, the, the motor is universal. You can put it on either side, so that's beautiful. So again, once you put the, the bearing on this side or the side that you're going to put the motor on, then you, you take this round piece here um, that you see, this is what slides down. Um, the spit is so solid that this is actually your reference point. So this is just really a support element. So that's why there's not a lock thing. You wanna make sure that, that as it's spinning, we don't want it bound. Um, so I think they purposely left a, a jam nut off of here so that if it does wanna move a, a couple millimeters as it's spinning, it can, it's, it's not, uh, it's not going to be forced and cause the motor to, to jam and bind and possibly break the, the motor. So we'll slide that down. 
um, pretty tight fit again. Um, so it's just going to hang there. Um, again, it's, it's not a super duper um, thing, but the minute we put the spit on, this is going to tighten up because the spit is so rigid and it's got these, these saddle supports here that the motor um, really is just there to turn and it, it's, it's not acting as, as a support system. <clears throat> All right, so we got the motor on. Um, we're gonna talk about this more uh, when we actually set up a, a cook, which will be in the third, possibly fourth video. But I will demonstrate briefly um, how these, how these uh, meat pieces go on. We have the two shoulder, uh, shoulder or shank um, forks, and then we have the backbone support. So what you do is again, you unscrew the jam nuts here in the front, right? We're just gonna slide those on like that. I'm gonna leave them loose for now. I just wanna show you that how they go on before you put it on the, the spit. I also want to demonstrate the, the craftsmanship. Um, these are, uh, you know, again, they're not very loose. They're, they're just loose enough that once you put your jam nut on, um, that they're, they're going to lock in. Um, put that one on there. Again, you'll see that. Um, you know, once locked on, um, and once it's penetrated the meat, it's, it's not going anywhere. Um, so actually, you know what, I'm going to make that loose because, uh, as I said, there may be mistakes, so I just realized that because I got such a short spit, I need to put them on this side. So we'll put, um, that one on there. And we'll put the backbone piece on like this, and then we'll put the other spit on like this, just to again demonstrate it. So now we're going to go like this. We're going to put the spit out here. I'm also going to demonstrate how this um, how this can be used. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put this on, and you'll see that it slides over this um, this cog here, just like that. Um, and uh, first thing that you'll notice is that I'm actually off a little bit, right? It's at an angle. So that's the beauty of this system and that what we can do is that we can just um, slide it up until we get a, you know, a good level. If you want to get a level, um, you can. Um, and then measure it, you know, certainly can do that um, if you need to. But for, for this demonstration assembly, that's great. So here we have, uh, we have our, we have it set up. Uh, you'll notice the motor. Um, now the motor's strong, okay? It's not moving at all because uh, it's connected to the cog here. And then again, now it's sitting in its bearing saddle. Um, so we have 100% uh, rigidity now. Um, this motor's not gonna bind. Um, it, it's not gonna go up or down. Um, so that's really good. All right, so the final step here, um, before we turn it on, is uh, we have this final stainless steel bolt. Um, what we're gonna do is uh, line this drive hole up, right? So just move it out a little bit until, um, until you see it. And then what we're gonna do is put it in here. Um, Wiggle it just a little bit, right, until you get 100%, um, which, again, let me take a second here. There it is. All right. So there we go. You can see um, I was able to get it in. So this is another one of those connections where um, 
I, I don't think we want to leave it. We, we want to go about a quarter, about a quarter term past, um, past tight. Again, we don't want it to form the metal any. Uh, we don't want it to be loose. So um, get it snug and then go a quarter term. Um, probably going to need two wrenches for that, one on top, one on the bottom. All right, so here we go. We have a, we have a final spit. Um, again, it, it doesn't turn by itself um, because it's geared. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug it in so that everybody can see and show you how this all uh, came together here. Um, a second here. The twisty tie here is pretty tight. Again, remember, uh, until I change this plug, we do have to use the um, you have to use the converter plug, which is right here, and my power strip over here. And you'll find there is no switch; it's automatic. The minute you turn it down on, uh, the minute it goes. So here we go; it's running. Um, you'll find that it's really rigid. This is rigid. This is no joke. Um, so this motor turns at about two and a half RPM, um, which is perfect for rotisserie. Uh, you'll find that this uh, drive bolt is about a half an inch, three quarters of an inch away from the bearings. Again, that's great. Uh, I feel both bearings turning here. I feel both bearings turning here. Uh, there's about a, an eighth of an inch gap in between uh, the saddle here, which means that the bearings are taking the entire load here, and it, it, it's not scraping against this metal hanger. Uh, again, another really good um, indication of the craftsmanship and the tolerances. They've measured this just perfect so that the bearings carry the weight of the, the spit. Um, you can see the motor's not moving. It sits on top of this, uh, of this saddle here. Um, and the way they designed it is that it holds the motor perfect. And then the, rigid, the rigidity of the stainless steel uh, spit it is the, the strength. Um, so the motor just has to sit there and turn. Uh, you can feel how strong it is. I'm actually trying to stop it. You can't stop it with my hands. Um, it, 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 so that's again telling me that the quality of this Italian Vitron motor is good. Um, it, it's definitely got strength, um, so uh, the quality uh, is really shaping up to be good. So um, after the um, after the unboxing and the assembly, um, I still have to cook with it, um, but I have to say that the quality and the the construction of this, I would say, is probably about a nine out of ten. Um, the the, the ease of, of assembly is a 9.5, um, and uh, again, uh, my overall review of both the assembly and unboxing of this is, is excellent. Absolutely excellent spit uh, for the uh, at-home uh, barbecuer and, and rotisserie and spit type person. Um, we're going we're gonna to put a big 80-pound uh, pig on this. And uh, we'll be back. This is Caveman Murph, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.